Hi guys, it's Beamer Zen with another video and today I will be replacing the radiator on my 316Ti compact BMW with N42 engine. I'm here again with my E46 compact BMW with N42 engine and lately I noticed that I had to top up the coolant so that means that I have a leak somewhere and uh, when I inspected the system I finally was able to find the leak it was kind of sneaky it is underneath the radiator on the passenger side or on the right hand side so first I'm going to try and show you where the leak is uh, and then I will go ahead and replace the radiator. So the first thing that we have to do is remove this intake cowling. I just need side cutting pliers and pull out the pins on the rivets. So once you do that you can easily remove the cowling. So here is the first one and the second one. So here goes the plastic rivet and now you can just pull it off. Then I'm going to remove this plastic cover here so I can easily remove the air intake box. Now I can just pull it out towards me. Then we have the two 10 millimeters on the side for the air box. Then we have to disconnect this little vacuum hose. Be careful, it could be brittle so it can break easily. If it breaks you have to replace it. And we also have to disconnect the mass airflow sensor here. There are two tabs on the connector that you have to squeeze. So here are the tabs. You have to squeeze them and pull the connector out. Then you have to undo the bolt on the clamping ring here. And then you can start removing the intake. So you just have to get it over the lip on the throttle body and just lift it out slowly. Now I'm going to lift the car up and I'm going to remove this bottom plastic splash cover. I have to remove three plastic rivets here and also a couple of Phillips screws that go all around. And here is the plastic cover. Now I did just wash the car, so there's a lot of water here. But uh, if you take a look here a bit more closely, uh, you can see that there's a lot of fluid here. So this is where the leak is occurring. Here is the bottom of the radiator. And as you can see, there are signs of the leak right here, this green and blue snot. This is the residue of the coolant that evaporated. So this leak was present for quite a lot of time and it was only apparent when I went on the highway and the engine was working at a higher RPM. So the throughput of the coolant was larger and the pressure built up. And this is where the coolant leaked out. So not a very serious leak, but in any case, we do have to replace the whole radiator. Now we have to drain the coolant and the drain plug is right here. And make sure that you use appropriate sized bit here or a screwdriver because the plug is quite oddly shaped. Make sure that you dispose of the coolant properly. Now we have to remove these bottom hoses from the fan cowling.
Then we have to remove this plastic rivet here for the secondary air pump filter. And we can just set this to the side. Then we have to disconnect these two connectors. So the first connector, you just squeeze the two tabs and it just pulls out. So this thing just came off. So I guess we won't disconnect it just yet. Now we have to remove this plastic rivet here and this T25 torque screw here. Now we have to remove two more plastic rivets underneath. So here's the first one and here is the second one. And now we can finally remove the fan cowling. So we just have to lift it up and it's out. Now we have to remove this hose here. So first we just need to lift the clips. Now we have to pull off the hose. You have to wiggle it a little bit because after a couple of years, they can get uh, pretty stuck on there. You have to hold it with both hands and just wiggle it a couple of times and it should release eventually. Here it goes. So this one is disconnected. And now we have to do the same here for this bottom hose here. So lift the locking pin and then just wiggle out the hose. There's another torque screw here that you have to remove. On this side of the radiator, there is another hose that needs to be unplugged so another retaining clip needs to be lifted up and now we have to wiggle it out if the hose is stuck you can try to wiggle it left right and up and down and eventually you should be able to get it off okay then we have to remove this bottom hose here and the sensor so to remove the sensor you just have to unlock it by twisting it clockwise and then pulling it out so the sensor is out now i'm going to remove the expansion tank and first i have to pull this lever here at the bottom and release the clip now i have to lift it up and tilt it towards the rear if the expansion tank is stuck you can try and wiggle it like this and at the same time pull it out and it should release.
On cars with automatic transmission, you will also have to remove the oil cooler for the automatic transmission that is mounted on the side. So you also have to remove the metal clip here on uh, this carrier and just wiggle out the cooler. As you can see, there are a couple of O-rings here that have to seal, but once you remove it, you should be able to remove the whole radiator. And now we can finally pull out the radiator. Make sure that the hoses are not in the way. And it's finally out. Here's the old radiator on the workbench. And now we have to relocate this plastic assembly and this bottom plastic guard. So the plastic guard, you just unclip and you can pull it out. I'm going to have to clean this. Then I'm going to remove this torque bolt here. Then I can lift this plastic piece and slowly pry it out. and it's off. Here you can see the tab that you have to lift to remove the automatic transmission cooler. Here I have the new cooler and uh, make sure that you get the right one because this one is for the automatic transmission. And uh, I've decided to go with the Male Premium Line brand so male or bear and uh, i think that this should be a good enough quality for my car now i have to put back the plastic attachments the side bracket for the expansion tank is now back on the new radiator so uh, this is the automatic transmission version and it is specific because it has additional attachments for the ATF fluid cooler for the automatic transmission. And uh, it also has a thermostat here. And when I was inspecting this part here, I noticed that my thermostat for the transmission cooler failed. So it broke right here, probably when I was removing the expansion tank. So this is something you definitely must check or even replace if you're doing this job. Now I did went ahead and buy a new thermostat. It's quite expensive part, so be prepared to shell out some more euros for this. Uh, now, as you can see, this is from Male or Bear company, which is pretty good. So it is the same as the original and this is how it looks like. So basically what happened is this top part broke off and the spring uh, basically popped off and it's a useless piece of junk now. So again, make sure that you are careful when removing the expansion tank on the automatic transmission and uh, be prepared to replace it if it fails. Fun fact, as you can see on the new part, the BMW logo is uh, grinded off. So uh, it's uh, debranded. So this is definitely the OEM part. So this is a very good quality part. That means that you don't have to buy directly from BMW. You can buy from the same company that makes the part and it's identical part, but usually much cheaper. Okay, the thermostat is back in. 
And I've also reattached this bottom plastic holder for the hoses and now the radiator is ready to be put back into the car. The radiator is back in and you have to make sure that it fits correctly. So here on this side you will see there is a screw here and this screw has to align with the plastic part on the back where it screws in. So just make sure that uh, the radiator slides into the bracket correctly. And here on this side, you have to make sure that this part here aligns with the mounting bracket at the back. And if you take a look here, I don't know if you can see, but you have to make sure that this slot here is notched together so this is the correct position you can make sure that uh, it doesn't move out if you wiggle it make sure that everything is nicely in line so nothing is uh, bent now we have to reconnect this bottom hose here Make sure that the clip is in released position. This one isn't. And now we can push the hose into the final position. And then we lock it with the clip. Also, don't forget to reattach the sensor. I did disconnect it later because it was in the way. So, okay. Now I'm going to reinstall the expansion tank. You can see there is a knob here that you have to align with the notch on the side of the plastic uh, holder. So make sure that this release tab is in release position. And also while you're doing this, it's also a good idea to replace the expansion tank if it's very old. I don't have the new one here, so I will have to reuse this one. So first align the bottom two hoses and then you can start tilting it towards the front. And then when it's this horizontal position, you can just slowly press it in. With the expansion tank in place, we can now reattach this bottom hose here. And then we reattach the top hoses. Make sure you don't use any lubricant on the ceiling rings that can contaminate the coolant. Then we have to reattach the automatic transmission fluid cooler. So it just slides on and then you have to press down this little tab here at the top and this locks the cooler in place. And then we also have to attach this bottom hose here. And we also have to reattach the coolant level sensor here. And this bottom hose here has to slide here on this notch over here. So then we reinstall the fan cowling from the top. So it just slides in. Make sure that everything is nicely seated. Reinstall this box here or reconnect it. And then we reattach the fan connector. I've reinstalled all the hoses back into their position. And I've also put the plastic rivets here for the bottom cooling hose. And this is uh, now finished.
Now I'm going to reinstall this bottom splash plate. Then we reinstall the torque screw here and put back the plastic rivet on the other side. The secondary air filter housing is back on and secured with the plastic rivet. Now we can reinstall the air box and uh, make sure that this slot here fits onto this rubber mounting at the bottom. Metal clamp is tightened up. The little vacuum hose here at the back is attached and also the mass airflow sensor here is connected. So this is now ready to go. Now it's time to fill the system up with the coolant. First we need to release the vent screws. So one is here at the oil cooler. You don't have to screw it all the way out, just uh, a couple of millimeters. And the other screw is here. This should be enough. Then turn ignition on. Set to max temperature on the controller. But set the fan to the lowest setting. So 32 degrees centigrade and the low setting for the fans and now we can start adding coolant. Make sure that you use correct coolant for your system. So for BMWs, this is a blue green color and you slowly start to fill it up. Okay, we have the coolant in, now we close the cap and we also close the venting screws. Now we have to start the engine and let it warm up to working temperature so that thermostat opens. Then open the filler cap again. Make sure that you don't scold yourself on the hot coolant, so release it slowly. And then you can add more coolant if you see that this is below the minimum level. And uh, you will probably have to drive the car for uh, 10 or 20 kilometers, maybe even more, and repeat this process of uh, opening the bleeder valve here and here and let the air out. One very common sign of trapped air in the cooling system is a sloshing sound of the liquid in the cabin. If you hear that, then you will probably have to release some air from this vent screw here because this is actually the topmost part of the whole system. So this is where the air builds up and you will have to release it. So what I usually do is I drive the car for some time and I carry a flat screwdriver with me and also some coolant. And uh, after I get home, I usually just open the valve, let some air out. And also in the morning, I check the level when the engine is cold and I top it up. So. It might take some time to get all the air out of the system. Last, we have to reinstall this plastic cover. There are a couple of tabs here at the back, so here and here, and they have to fit into these rubber mounts here and there at the back. And when you're doing this, make sure that you are installing this cover in such a way that the pins engage with the holes, otherwise the back of this plastic cover will rub against this uh, air filter housing here or cabin filter housing and this is the result. So you can see this happened to me a couple of times. So uh, be very careful and make sure that it engages. So let me show you. You will have to start like this and then you have to tilt it towards the top.
make sure that it sits and that it clears the cabin filter housing. Then you just have to put back two 10 millimeter screws. And also the last step, put back this cowling and the two plastic rivets and you will be done. Okay, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you have N42 or N46 engine or E46 BMW. So in the meantime, keep Zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance. Thank you.